Okay, in this video, we're going to be going over our homework for week three. I'm going to go through some examples that should help you to complete that homework. And you can see that the very first set of problems that you're going to be working on are free body diagrams to kind of pick up where you left off with week two. And number one, it says that a book is at rest on a tabletop, and you need to diagram the forces that are acting on that book. So we begin like we usually do with these problems, with the force of gravity. So you can draw the force of gravity going down from this book. The box represents our book. And because this book is resting on a tabletop, we're going to show an equal and opposite force going against gravity. And this, is, this force is present here because we're talking about our normal force. So remember that whenever an object is resting on a surface, there's a normal force that opposes um, gravity in equal amount. The fact that it's at rest tells us this as well. So we can go ahead and show these two arrows to be equal in magnitude going in opposite directions. And again, this is the force of gravity and the normal force. For number two, it says that a girl is suspended motionless, again, a key word here, motionless from a ceiling, by two ropes. And you need to diagram the forces that are acting on the combination of the girl and bar. Okay, so in this case, there's a girl that's hanging from a bar that's using two ropes that's, that are being um, attached to the ceiling. So we've got the force of gravity pulling down on this girl on the bar. So I'll draw that force going down. And then we have two ropes going up. Now the fact that she's motionless must mean that these two ropes, when added together, their forces should equal the force of gravity going down. So I'm not going to draw both ropes to be equal in magnitude to the bottom. Instead, I'll draw them to be half the size. Because if I draw them to be half the size, then when I add them together, they should equal the bottom force of gravity. Remember, when two forces are on the same side, we add them together. And then we would subtract top minus bottom. So add the two on top. We add these two vectors together. They come out to be about the same length as the one on the bottom. So in this way, we have the force of gravity going down, pulling down on this girl, and then we have two forces going up. The force of tension in this first rope, and then another force of tension in this second rope. When these two are added together, they equal the force of gravity going down. This is why we're motionless. Looking at number three, it says that an egg is free falling from a nest in a tree, you are going to neglect air resistance, and you need to diagram the forces acting on the egg as it is falling. So we're going to start with gravity, like we always do. In this case, we are neglecting air resistance. The fact that we're neglecting air resistance means that as this egg falls, there's no resistance to gravity. There's nothing going against gravity in this example. So we're only going to be left with this force of gravity going down. If they had said that there was air resistance, then we would have drawn an arrow going up against the motion of this egg going down. Looking at number four, it says that a flying squirrel is gliding from a tree to the ground at constant velocity. Consider air resistance and diagram the forces acting on the squirrel. Okay. So in this example, the fact that they tell us you're going at constant velocity is a really big indication of how big to draw our forces. You're going to start with the force of gravity going down. Try to make that straighter. So you have the force of gravity pulling the squirrel down. And the fact that it's going at a constant velocity, and they do want you to consider air resistance, means that there has to be a force of friction from the air resistance going up that's equal in magnitude. So you'd want to draw these two forces equal. And the reason I'm drawing them equal is because it says constant velocity. Constant velocity means your acceleration equals zero. That means our net force equals zero. So we have to make sure that when we do top minus bottom, we get zero. The fact that they tell us to consider air resistance helps us identify the force that's opposing gravity. In this case, it's the force of friction from the air resistance. 
So you can go ahead and take a stab at finishing the other problems. They all revolve around you identifying whether the object is at equilibrium or constant velocity, and then just putting which forces are acting on the object. The second part of the homework deals with this chart. And in this chart, all we're going to be using for every single one of these um, problems is this equation. Force equals mass times acceleration. This equation can be re re rewritten, sorry, excuse me, to solve for acceleration, which would be force divided by mass, or it can be rewritten to solve for mass, which is force divided by acceleration. You're going to be using one of these three equations for every single part of this data table. If they're solving for force, then you use the force equation. If they need you to find mass, like in number five, you would use the equation for number three. And if they're trying to find acceleration, as they are in the first three, you're going to want to use this first equation, the second equation for acceleration. Let's look at one example. For number one, we're going to be using the acceleration equation because we can see that they're looking for an acceleration. So acceleration equals force divided by mass. And in this case, that would mean we'd be dividing 10 by 2. 10 newtons divided by 2 kilograms will give us an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. So all that you would have to do is fill in your chart and show that you knew the acceleration would be 5. And you can continue to fill in the rest of them based on which equation you would need to solve for the missing component. The final part of your homework is dependent on you being able to solve some word problems. And in number one, it tells you to determine the acceleration that results when a 12 Newton force, this is our force, is applied to a three kilogram object. So this is our mass and then to a six kilogram object. This is our second mass. So we need to find the acceleration for both of these objects. You know from just talking about it that force divided by mass gives you acceleration. So we're just gonna do this equation twice, one for the three kilogram object and one for the six kilogram object. So for the three kilogram object, it would be 12 Newtons divided by the three kilograms, which gives us four meters per second squared acceleration. And for the second object, we would have 12 Newtons divided by the six kilograms. And that gives us two meters per second squared acceleration. On number two, it tells you that you have a net force of 15 Newtons. And that is exerted on an encyclopedia to cause it to accelerate at a rate of 5 meters per second squared. This is our acceleration. We need to find the mass. The equation for mass is just force divided by acceleration. So in this case, we would take the 15 newtons divided by the acceleration of 5 meters per second squared. And that would give you a mass of 3 kilograms. The rest of these problems rely on you understanding some of the basic concepts of net force and also this equation for F equals MA, the rewritten forms for acceleration and mass. And if you're able to do those things, then you should be able to finish the rest of the word problems. As always, if you have any questions, make sure you come to tutoring Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in the mornings, or in the afternoon, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday.